Our kingdom has experienced an unfortunate interregnum in our history that lasted for 88 years. But because the Almighty God had reserved the importance that Ishekiri would be to the formation and the greatness of what would be a successful Nigeria, a force beyond all human reckoning and comprehension did the impossible and brought back this exalted throne and with it a king, Olu Ginoa II. To be witness to the beginning of a process of what would be an independent Nigeria. This time, however, God did not just intervene to truncate and dis any disruptive plots. He ensured that the Ishekiri nation stood united and all Nigeria rallied behind the Ishekiri to ensure that there was no division. We have before you all today that we are not and were never offended at any point in time during the process that culminated in this day that has seen me ascend to the throne of my fathers. This is, in every ramification, a very special day. One that has been predestined and divinely ordained by the Most High God. He and He alone could have determined that three months after our Idanike began in May, our coronation will take place today, the only Saturday in this year 2021 that occurs as the 21st day of the month. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this, and this unique August day is truly a day of the Almighty God's divine visitation to Iwere Kingdom. It is not just a divine visitation, it heralds a divine habitation. There is no part of this that has been of my own doing. It was and remains God's divine project. And as a result, the mischief that some had intended, God has used it for good. Our Yoruba brothers have an expression. When the palace of the king burns down, it is because a more beautiful one wants to be erected in its place. The taboo that was done by the desecration of our most prized crown jewels made a way for a more beautiful one fashioned by our own royal person while staying true to the inspiration of the one that came from Portugal way back in the 17th century. Before then, however, Olu Ginoa I brought a coral beaded crown from the source in Benin. And that crown adorned the heads of the first six Olus. Olu Atuwashe I brought a pair of silver crowns that would adorn the heads of the next 14 Olus. By the special grace of God, we have the privilege to introduce a new pair of gold and silver crowns to the already rich and beautiful history of the attire of the Olo of Ori. And as the progression of our crown is symbolic for all to see, from coral to silver and now to gold, so shall there be a spiritual, physical, social and economic manifestation of the progress of our kingdom and our people. While not seeking to reopen old wounds, it is pertinent to recall the fact that following the grave injustice meted out to Olu Erejua II, he visited His Royal Majesty Oba Akenzua II of Benin and recounted his ordeal. In a reaction 
a curse was placed on the land by both of them. It is not recorded that Olua Rejua II reversed the curse over the land. Neither is it recorded that Oba Akenzua II did the same. Most probably, the issue was never revisited. As a firm believer in the intricate interconnectedness between the spiritual and the manifestation in the physical, it is our firm belief that the matter needs to be addressed. Today, in our capacity as Olu, we hereby avow. As the spiritual, cultural, political, and traditional ruler of this land, I, Ogiame Atuashe III, the 21st Olu of Wari, the first son of Olu Atuashe II, the grandson and direct descendant of Olu Erejua II, who was offended on this throne, I hereby reverse the curse placed over this land. In its place, I release forgiveness and healing to the federal government of Nigeria, whose might was used to propagate that offense. And I decree unprecedented and uncommon peace prosperity, progress, development upon this land. I bring down the government of heaven onto this land and I direct it to flow as a force that can neither be sabotaged, slowed, nor stopped. It goes out as a strong ripple effect emanating from this kingdom to the rest of the Niger Delta, to the rest of the Nigerian nation, and even the African continent. Africa has always been shaped as a gun with Nigeria as its trigger. Today, that gun has been fired and full restoration comes out of the barrel. This land begins to yield, yield its riches to us. All that has been hidden hitherto comes to the surface and the world shall marvel as to how we have defied projected economic trends. And this time around, we shall be the ones to chart the course of our own destiny. And now, as the Shakiri is restored to its original identity as one of blessing, we decree, because the Shakiri is blessed, Nigeria is blessed. Because Ishekiri is blessed, Africa is blessed.